Hello everyone, hi, welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. Uh, watch the video till the end and also if you are new to this channel then you can subscribe us by clicking the bell icon. Friends, today we are going to have a tutorial on poison pills. Now what would you do if your neighbor suddenly barges in and catches you off the card and seizes your house? I mean, in all the probabilities, you would use all your powers and put up a tough fight, right? A Chinese philosopher Sun Tzu Zhu said, Invisibility lies in the defense, so the possibility of the victory in the attack. So, the defense does not necessarily have to be a physical attack. A razor-sharp defensive strategies are good as lethal weapons, while a neighbor seizing your house is not something that is anticipated in the normal course of life. Hostile takeovers in corporate landscapes is something very common. In usual business parlance, an attempt to acquire a company without the approval of the board of directors is termed as hostile takeover. Usually, and friendly bid or corporate raid as hostile takeover is also called occurs when an investor suddenly buys a large number of shares in a company with an intention of gaining controlling interest. Naturally, the target companies will not welcome this and design strategies to counter it. While there are various defense mechanisms in place, the most common ones are called poison pills. So let's dig deeper to understand the history of this mechanism and story behind the Moppet name. Now, now let's understand what are the reasons for the poison pills. As you can see in the chart, the activist investors take change 26%, safely friendly merger 5%, routine 26 unsolicited 11%, and activist closing out to 4 So main reason for adoption of the poison pill, a poison pill is a popular defense mechanism for target company. When it uses shareholders' rights as a tactics to make the hostile acquisition deal expensive or less attractive for the raiders. This strategy also acts as a tool to slow down the speed of the potential hostile attempts in future. Poison pills are generally adopted by the board of directors without the approval of the shareholder. It also comes with a provision that the right associate can be altered or redeemed by the board required. I mean, this is to indirectly compel direct negotiations between the acquirer and the board so as to build a ground for better bargaining power. See, poison pill can pinch into two ways. They can either make an acquisition very hard, nuts to the creek, or they can have negative side effects that unfolds in various stages. So what are the common types of poison pills? See poison pill is an all encompassing the term and there are various forms in which it is triggered in practical corporate setting. Some of the widely used tools are first preferred stock plan. Prior to 1984 when the hostile takeovers just jutted their ugly head, preferred stock plans were primarily used as poison pills. Under this plans, the company issues dividend of the preferred stock to the common shareholders which comes with the voting rights. Preferred stockholders could exercise special rights whenever outsiders suddenly bought a large chunk of shares. Second, which is called flip-in. In 1984, certain other methods were also saw a light of the day. One such tactics is flip-in poison pill. When corporate raiders buy sizable holdings in a company, flip is one of the most preferred strike back. I mean, here the target company buys a large number of the shares at a discount rate to counter the offer, which eventually leads to the dilution of the control of acquirer. For example, if an investor buys more than 15% of the company's stock, other shareholders apart from the bidders buy increased number of shares. So the greater the additional shares purchased, the more diluted the acquirer's interest. It is also, it basically it also increases the cost of the bid. Once the bidder gets the hint that such a plan is been executed, he may become cautious and become discouraged to pursue the deal further. It may also be possible that the bidder then comes up with the formal offer to the board for negotiation. Third, flip over. Flip over is the opposite of flip in and happens when the shareholders choose to buy shares in the acquirer company and after the merger. Let's say the shareholders of the target company exercise the option of buying two for one share in the merged company at a discount. The option usually comes with a predetermined expiration date and no voting rights. See, diluting the acquirer's interest to a significant extent makes the deal quite expensive and expiriting. If, if the acquirers back off, the target company can redeem those rights as well. Fourth, back and right plan. Under this defense mechanism, the target company shuffles employee stock option plans and designs in, in a way that they become effective in the event of any unwelcome bid. So this entails providing shareholders a privilege to obtain shares with a higher value if the acquirer company takes a majority stake. This way, the acquiring company would not be able to quote a lower price for the shares. This is nothing but a move to deter the acquisition. However, under exceptional circumstances, if the acquirer is ready to offer a great price, the back and right plans fall through. Fifth, the golden handcuff. 
the golden handcuff. We all agree that the employees are the biggest asset of the company. Golden handcuffs are nothing but various incentive offered to the company to ensure that they stay on. Usually golden handcuff are issued in the form of deferred compensation, employee stock options or restricted stock which can be earned after the employee reaches a particular performance threshold. However, not many of us know that golden handcuffs can be also be used as anti takeover mechanism. When an unsolicited bid happens, the poison pills get triggered. The key staff becomes wasted in the stock options and the golden handcuffs are removed. So these employees, some with extremely rich experience and acumen, are now free to leave the company. The acquirers will therefore lose the key executives of the target company and this will make the part difficult for them, for him to, to be traded. Sixth is called the voting plans. The design on the same lines are preferred stock plans and flip-in. The tactics involves voting right as a tool for controlling mechanism. When a substantial block of shares is obtained by the investor, preference shares apart from, from then the large block holders become authorized super voting rights. This makes it difficult and unattractive to obtain voting control by the bulk share purchaser. Let's see the trend of the poison pill adopted according to the market cap. Let's see that and this will be till 20. 14 so let's see that can you see the graph over here uh, the large cap with poison was close enough to 32 percent without poison was 25 percent small cap with po poison was 41 and without 31 uh, basically it's written over here the graph shows that till 2014 a major portion of the small caps 41 percent as well as the large cap of 32 percent in the u.s adopted poison pill as a defense mechanism Let's get into the history of the poison pill. You know, after looking at all these numbers, every phenomenon in the world has no history behind it. And poison pills are no exception. The blatant occurrence of hostile takeovers and defense mechanism was in full momentum in 1980s. Hostile takeovers become the order of the day, beginning since 1970. Cor corporate traders like T. Boone Pickens and Carly Cahan sent chills down to the spin of many corporate boards. There are no legalized defense tactics in this place. In 1982, MA lawyer Martin Lipton of Watchill, Lipton and Rosen and Katz came as a knight in shining armor and invented the poison pill, defense to prevent hostile corporate takeovers. According to the experts, this was the most significant legal development in the corporate law in the 20th century. The legality of the poison pills has been a vague, complete vague, when they were first came in the early 1980s. Though the Delvare Supreme Court advocated poison pill as a valid defense tactic in its 1985 decision in Moran versus the Household International Inc. Many jurisdictions, jurisdictions outside the US that, that, that considers poison pills as illegal and place constraints on the applicability, not accepting. So what's the story behind such an awkward name that dates back to the tradition of the appinoge prevalent during the monarchical era. Wherever a spy was caught by an enemy, he immediately swallowed a cyanide pill to escape the interrogation and revelation of the truth. So poison pills owes its name to its the, to these practices. Let's take a couple of examples. The first example I'll take is of Netflix. See, Carly Cahan, an institutional investor, caught Netflix off guard in 2011 by acquiring 10% stake in the company. The later responded by issuing shareholders' right plan as poison pill, a move which irked Carl Ihan to end. I mean, to no end. A year later, he cut his holding to 4.5%. And Netflix terminated its rights issue plan in December 2013. I'll show you. Uh, can you see this article? Netflix adopts poison pill to fend off a Khan. So Netflix on Monday said it adopted stockholders' right plan. Okay. So this you can you can read the article. Uh, second is gain capital poison pill example that we are going to take. When FXCM Inc. planned to acquire Gain Capital Holdings Inc. back in April 2013. Gain responded by triggering a poison pill. Rights were decided to be distributed as divided to the common shares at the rate of one for one of the company held by the stockholders. Upon occurrence of an unforeseen event, each right would authorize stockholders to buy one hundredth of the shares of a new series of the participating preferred stock at an exercise price of seventeen dollars, which was later raised. Again, there's an article article for this. I'll show you that. The gain capital adopts poison pill defense against the FXCM hostile takeover. Well, it's written over here. Well, this is certainly didn't take long and should confirm to our readers that what we wrote yesterday, namely FXCM gain capital friendly discussion had been going on behind the scenes for quite some time between FXCM and Gear. Poison pill meant before breaking down, leading to FXCM unsolicited offer to acquire gain capital made through a bear hug. Bear hug is one such type. Later to the 
gains board so the gain capital board puts in place controversial shareholders right plan the third example that i'm going to take is of micron tech poison pill example the board of the director of micron technology inc the largest us memory chip maker adopted a poison pill strategy in apprehension of the hostile takeover the tactic was right issue that would trigger if an individual or group acquire 4.99 percent or more of the company's outstanding stock i'll show you the article for the same also over here the micron gains as poison pill sparks speculation its target in in the yellow highlighted it's written micron boards of director adopted a poison pill a rights issue that would be triggered if an individual or a group acquired 4.99 percent or more of the company outstanding stock and micron said on monday in regulating filing so it's this is the article for the same the fourth one example peer one imports poison pill example more recently in september 2016 peer one imports inc resorted to poison pill measures when the hedge fund firm eldin global capital llc disclosed 9.5 percent stake in the former the agreement entitled every common stockholders the right to buy a fraction of the junior preferred stock at a price of 17.5 the preferred shares would have similar voting terms to common stock diluting the control of any shareholders capturing the big stake i'll show you the article for the same can you see the article pr1 import adopts a poison pill measures and it is written the agreement attaches every shares of the common stock to buy a fraction of junior preferred stock at 17.5 now let's see some of the advantages and disadvantages of poison pill first advantages a poison pill is a strong defense mechanism for a target company allowing company to identify fruitful acquisitions and discourage actions of corporate raiders the poison pills also acts as a speed breakers of potential raids the spin off effect are usually positive and could lead to shareholders earning higher premiums if an acquisition is favorable second poison pills are usually triggered as a negotiation technique okay to clinch a sweater deal it allows company to buy a time and grant management they dictate the terms any takeover in any manner that is most lucrative for them let's see some of the disadvantages poison pill has the power to adversely impact the shareholder value the flip in leads to more purchases at a lower share price large number of shares impact its valuation example i'll give you in 2008 microsoft offered yahoo shareholders 31 per share representing a 62 percent premium at the time but pulled out its hand after being stung by the poison pill yahoo shares price took a hit since the proposal and its head Jerry Pinto also lost his position. Why shareholders value lost due to the poison pill? I'll show you that. Shareholders value lost due to poison pill. Recent example, you can see offer amount in the first one. Target stock price was sixty six percent. Subsequent target stock price, one day, three, thirty uh, day, and ninety day, eighty two, ninety three, and ninety four percent decline. So there was a sev severe decline of all the all these companies. You can see Yahoo is also there. Scandisk, some of the known companies. So you can see it has some negative impacts too. You can refer the chart of, and you can have a clear idea about which all companies were involved. Now, poison pill always is it bitter or sometimes sweet? I, I mean, that's one question I'm asking you. Hostile takeovers and defense mechanism cannot be classified in black and white compartments. See, there are certain gray areas also. Not all takeovers are bad either. Neither all takeovers defense mechanism in the, is in the best interest of the company. So some of these investors have significant knowledge. of the industry and company affairs sometimes much better than the company's management itself so corporate raids or hostile takeovers have manifested themselves in a relatively constructive form called investor activism activism these days any act of the investors to influence corporate parts or shareholders long term goal is viewed as activism according to the s&p capital iq the agendas vary among the investors and focus on the specific areas including cost reduction reorganization corporate spin off revamped uh, financing structures greater leverage and more shareholder oriented uses of cash and liquidity to realize higher enterprise value in the public market thus we can see that the practice that took corporate world by storm in 1980s is relevant even today s&p capital iq stated that from 2005 to 2009 89 activity activist actions occurred while in the past 5 years from 2010 to 2014 341 actions took place so there has been volume increase in each year since 2010 and the trend has sustained itself strongly in 2015 i'll show you some details on the same this is the investors activism per sector over the past decade as you can see the consumer direct discretionary and the consumer staples energy financials the major was seen in consumer discretionary 
uh, data and uh, then post financials so invested activism per per sector over the past decade has been mentioned over here in this particular graph before ascertaining whether poison pill are doing any good to the company we need to understand that any company has many stakeholders and each of them is affected in different way during the potential takeover shareholders have a peculiar interest in its maximizing the value of the company share board of directors have different financial stakes and responsibility towards the company and the shareholders at the same time corporate executives who also have ownership in the company may either stand to gain or lose from the takeovers other company employees usually at a lower and middle level stands to lose most of its time as a result of the merger news of acquiring companies announcing mass layoff during the merger is also not unheard of so let's make a quick conclusion on this it is difficult to conclude whether a poison pill is actually beneficial or not it all depends on the long term goals of the both the companies understanding how a company responds to hostile takeovers with poison pill or the defense can reveal greater truths about how a company tackles critical issues pertaining to the management and itself so that's it uh, for this particular topic if you have learned and enjoyed watching this video please like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel for the latest updates thank you everyone cheers